I've been dealing with decorators quite a bit lately and somehow I've been wondering how these things even work. You can find decorators in many dependencies like TypeOM, Type GraphQL or View Property Decorator. These decorators allow us to write more elegant code. By the end of this video you will know exactly what decorators are in TypeScript and how they work internally. Let's first clarify what decorators are in TypeScript. You will see decorators in many libraries and they all start with an add character followed by the name of the decorator. The point behind these decorators is nothing more than simply noting meta information for certain types. With the help of decorators we can add information to a library. The important thing to understand is that we do not necessarily need decorators to implement logic or to implement things. This is really just syntactical sugar so that users of your code or library can reuse certain logic quite easily. We can use these decorators anywhere. For example, we can write a decorator on top of a class, next to a function parameter or on top of a simple function. Here, as always, the execution is from top to bottom. That means that the class decorator is executed first and then chronologically the decorators that follow it. In addition, we can also use several decorators at the same time with, for example, a class. It is funny though that in TypeScript, decorators are nothing more than simple functions. And that is exactly how we declare our own decorators. There are different types of decorators. We are going to take a closer look at them now. In parallel, we will also look at the compiled JavaScript code. Let's first look at the rough setup for the TypeScript examples. We have a simple npm project and we will use the following dependencies. TypeScript, tlsnode and nodemon. We also have a script that executes the index file in our source folder. In addition we have a tlsconfig file. Here it is important that we set the option experimental decorators to true in the compiler options. This option then allows us to use our decorators in the TypeScript project. The first type of decorators is the class decorator. As the name suggests, these decorators allow us to execute meta information and logic over a class. For this, I've prepared a simple class and we can think of it as a simple view or web component. Now I'm keeping this example really simple to not mess things up. Let's define a new function and call it component. Here we define a parameter of the type function. Since a class is nothing but a function in JavaScript, we get the whole class as a parameter of our decorator. As an example, we can add a simple property to the prototype chain. Now we can write this decorator over our class with the add symbol. If we now create a new class and then output id there, we see that everything now works perfectly. Here the property id in our class is overwritten with the value in the decorator function. Now we have successfully implemented a simple decorator. What if this decorator for example expects an object as a parameter? For this we will use a decorator factory. A decorator factory is defined by returning a function in the decorator function. Here we have the function or more specific the class as a type for the parameter. Since we want to set the static variable element id, we let the function type inherit from the types of the class. In the decorator function itself we can now expect an object as a parameter and can then add the associated id in the decorator factory. When we apply the decorator we can then define an object where we again define the id. If we look closely at the result we see that everything worked fine and we can now manipulate a static variable in a class via a decorator. Let's take a quick look at the compiled code for this. If we compile the whole fun in JavaScript, we see that we have a decorate function. This function is responsible for the whole assignment and allocation of the decorators. On the other hand, we then use this decorate function again in the test class to define our decorators. We can see that this is an array and so we can simply use multiple decorators at the same time. I hope you know something about the class decorators and how to define and use them. Let's jump directly to the next decorator. The method decorator allows us to define decorators for certain functions. For this we implement again a simple function and this function expects three arguments. The first argument is the target or the current prototype object. In our case this would be the prototype chain of our test object. After that we have the property key. This is a simple string and simply represents the name of the function. 
As a final third parameter, we have the descriptor. This descriptor simply describes the method. Of course, we can also make a decorator factory out of it, but we will skip this step for now. Now we can manipulate the actual value of the property descriptor by overriding the value property. This value property represents the actual function. Therefore, we could execute this function to find out the return value of the function itself. This value property is a function and it can expect different arguments of different types. Logically, we can also pass different types and a different number of arguments to a function as parameters. For the sake of testing, we just return a normal string to the function. This return value then reflects the result of the actual function. This arcs parameter contains all our parameters that we pass when calling the function. After executing, we can see that it successfully outputs what we expected. Method decorators are relatively easy to understand. I really recommend that you test them for yourself. Next, let's take a look at the property decorators. With the help of these property decorators, we can pass different properties or property meta information. Let's define a simple function again. This function now expects the target of our property decorator, which again reflects the object and then the name of the property. In this function we can now pass on or manipulate things, for example if we set the value of the property or even call it somehow. For this example we define a setter and getter function and then we just output something. In the setter function we also set the current value to the new value. The next step is to tell the object that we have defined these two functions here. For this we set the properties get and set of the object to the defined functions. This get property is called as soon as the property itself is called somehow. The set property is therefore self-explanatory and is called accordingly as soon as a value is set for this property. Let's test it out and we see that we get some logging messages back there. That is actually all there is to the property decorator. The so-called parameter decorator can be applied to our parameters in a function. For this we define a function again and this time it expects three arguments. We have again the target, then the method name and then the position of the parameter in the argument array. To keep things simple we just output the index and the method name. As always you can implement your decorator logic here. If we start everything we see the output which of course is what we expect. Otherwise feel free to compile the code again and we will see that all decorators are created and applied with the help of the decorate function. That is about it for all our decorators. There are different use cases for decorators. A popular example would be to use decorators for logging. I've already demonstrated a small example here using the property decorator. Other use cases could be caching, monitoring business rules or simple data validation. I guess these things aren't really hard to understand, but personally I've never really had to implement them myself. It is just syntactical sugar for the users of your library. If you want another practical example, feel free to post it in the comments and I will of course make an extra video about it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.